Today we're going to show you how to do uh, axle conversion from leaf springs to torsion axles on an aluminum boat trailer. Had a few requests on uh, how complicated it is to swap out the system. Today we're going to show you a few key points to pay attention to when doing this at your, at your own house. A few things to take into consideration. So frame width from outside to outside. Make sure that your torsion axle matches your frame width. Another thing you want to look at is your track measurement from hub face to hub face. I'm going to make sure that this matches on your torsion axle as well. Right. Hub face to hub face is where your tire mounts to the hub itself. You want to hook on the outside of the hub on one side, the outside of the hub on the other one. This one's right at 93 and 3 quarters. Another important factor to keep in mind is your spindle placements. You want to take your tape measure, hook it to the rear of your frame, measure to your spindle. Rear spindle on this one is at 61 inches. You want to record that measurement. Do the exact same thing for your forward spindle, which is 95 inches. Write these measurements down, you're going to need them later in the video. Once you've recorded your frame width, track measurements, record your spindle, 61 inches to the rear spindle, 95 inches to the front spindle. Okay. First you want to identify what type of spring hanger system you have. There's two different types. One, the spring hanger is separate and bolts individually to the frame. The step on this system actually mounts to the I-beam itself and is not connected at all. In this system, the entire spring hanger assembly and steps are all one piece, so it will all have to be you removed. You locate your fastening hardware, which connects the spring hangers to the frame itself. These will need to be removed. Another measurement you want to take down is going to be from the rear of the frame to where the inner edge of each step is. This one's at 44. You need to record a measurement for the rear and then one for the front as well. This one's at 111. You want to write down these measurements to the inside of your step where it meets the fender. Now that your previous undercarriage is removed, you're going to want to duplicate the measurements you took earlier. Starting at the rear of the frame, you want to mark where your rear step is. Measurements were at 44 inches. You want to put a mark at 44 inches. Next, your rear spindle, which is marked at 61 inches. Then your front spindle, which is at 95 inches. Then your front step, which is at 111 inches. Each trailer's measurements will vary depending on the setup that it has. Once you've got your new axles in place, make sure that your new spindle measurements line up with your previous spindle measurements on your front and rear axles. Start with the 3 8 pilot hole. Make sure your axle, axle stays in place and move up to a 5 8 to fit the slot in the axle. Once you have your axle holes drilled out, next move on to your steps. The line that you measured earlier was the inside of your step where the fender mounts to it. Place your new step over your frame, lining up the edge of the step with your previous mark. Clamp it in place. Make sure that the step is squared up to the frame. Next, drill out your step holes through your frame for the new placement. For the steps, we used a 3-8 stainless steel bolt by inch and a quarter. Make sure to put silver grade anti-seize on it. Keeps it from locking up. Put your bolt through the hole. Flat washer. Stainless steel nylon lock nut. And do this for each mounting hole on each step. the axle we'll be using 5 8 diameter by inch and three quarter stainless steel bolts. Don't forget to put any C's on anything stainless. There's a flat washer on the slotted side of the axle and a 5 8 nylon lock nut. Let's 
carry your axle to the frame. For this conversion, we are reusing the original fenders. It's a good idea to mock up your wheels, the lug nuts to keep them tight, so that you can figure out where the fender placement is going to be. You're going to measure in between your frame and the edge of your fender to make sure that your fender is straight at the top and the bottom. With these torsion axles, you want to have at least three and a half to four inches of space in between the tire and the fender. Once you've decided where your fender needs to be, make sure that it's secured in place tightly and that all the measurements in between the frame and the fender are even on top and bottom. Ensure that your fender is mounted straight. On this one, we will be using the previous mounting holes that are already in the fender to mount it to the step. For the fender, we're using the exact same hardware that we used to mount the step. 3-8 stainless steel bolt by inch and a quarter. Stainless steel flat washers placed on the inside to help support the fender. Again, make sure to use any C's and stainless steel lock nuts. Once you've mounted your fender in place, next you move on to your fender bracket. These were removed from the original undercarriage, which used the leaf spring setup. This fender bracket actually mounted to the leaf spring hangers, so they won't work on this current setup. I took the original bracket and modified it to fit this frame. It was cut shorter, and a secondary bracket was made to mount it to the frame. Next, measure in between your spindles to make sure that your fender bracket is centered. We'll be mounting this bracket straight to the I-beam itself using a 3-8 drill bit. using the exact same mounting hardware that we use for the steps and the fenders. Again, make sure to add any seams. Now it's time to attach the bracket to the fender using the same 3-8 drill bit drilled through the fender bracket into the fender. For this one we'll be using a 5 16 stainless steel carriage bolt. A lock washer and nut is used instead of a lock nut to keep the bolt from locking up. Once everything is secured in place, the tires can be mounted back on the trailer. Once you've secured your tire, go back and make sure all of your other hardware is tightened and in place and the job is done. The how-to video earlier was done on a trailer that we don't manufacture. This is our standard trailer and we offer a, a lot of different things starting with the steps. We offer a quarter inch by eight inch channel which is a full piece. It's custom welded trim work on it, all stainless steel hardware. Standard, we offer teardrop fenders, and our mounting hardware for the fender bracket is much stronger as well. We offer two by two angle on the fender side and on the frame side, as well as three inch flat bar mounted vertically, which makes it a lot more sturdy.